Joining us now, Dr. Ashley Gerhardt, a professor of clinical psychology at the University of Michigan, one of the nation's leading specialists in food addiction. Thank you, doctor, for joining the TAM fam. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Listen, you know, I watch, Amanda's here with me, and I'm watching her video diary. I, my heart just breaks for a very specific reason. I know, being in TV, how every time this subject matter is broached, people have a reaction, and it's not always supportive in the way that we support other addictions. Why is that? You know, I think that people, when they hear this, they think, well, we all have to eat, so it's impossible that people could have an addiction to these foods. But the thing I don't think people really consider is how much the foods in our environment have changed so drastically in the last 30 or 40 years. You know, the amounts of sugar and fat and salt that we find so rewarding have just been amped up to such a degree that our brain just really doesn't know how to handle them. And it uses our drive to make sure we're not going to starve. Our brain is still in the stone age and instead turns it against us. So we lose control and we are no longer eating for health, but it feels out of control. I, I don't want to go to extremes here, but you know, in the illegal drug world, drug dealers will put things in products to make them more addictive. As you well know, a lot of research and literature and debates out there about foods being engineered and refined in the same way that cigarettes were to basically set some people up to lose the battle who are particularly predisposed to it. You're absolutely right. So you know, we see that sugar is a powerful activator of the brain. We find it so rewarding. In animal models, we see that rats that are hooked on cocaine will still choose a sweet taste over that cocaine about 80 to 90% of the time. It's so powerful. And when we look at what's changed in our food environment, so much of it has been these ingredients like sugar and other refined carbohydrates, like starches, just going up and up and up in our food supply. And it's not surprising because in about the 1980s, uh, big tobacco got really into the food market. And big tobacco started being the biggest creators and producers and marketers of the ultra-processed junk food that dominate our environment today. And so many of this same playbook that was used to try and engineer cigarettes to make them so appealing and mm. so hard to quit. Well, we're seeing the same parallels now happening in the food that we all have to try and navigate because we have to eat. We don't have to smoke cigarettes, but we all have to choose food, which makes it in some ways even harder.